Welcome everyone, Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes here. So today we are going to be doing the third video from the series of three. So just a quick reminder, the idea is to take the same image and edit it with three different methods. So we have already done the first two videos. The first edit was the image that is positioned to the left and we have edited the portrait in Capture One. So we have done the skin retouch and color grading and all luminosity adjustments. In the second video, we've been working in Photoshop. So this is the image to the right. And here we have been working with dodging and burning. So let's just zoom in to compare the images. And as you already know, the result is quite similar. So the image to the left is capture one, the image to the right is Photoshop with dodging and burning. And today we are back to Photoshop and we will be working on the portrait with frequency separation. So once we have all the three images ready, we'll be able to position them next to each other and compare the result. So let's get started. Let's do the frequency separation. Okay, so we are back in Photoshop. This is the image that we were working with the previous method, dodging and burning. And here I have in fact the folder that contains all the adjustments. That way it will be easier to compare. So this is the result we have achieved in Photoshop in the previous video with dodging and burning. So this is before and this is the after. So now I'm going to just switch off this folder and start from scratch. So this is our starting point. So let's prepare our stack for frequency separation. To do this, we, we are going to duplicate the layer twice. So this is our background layer. Let's hit Command J and Command J again on the keyboard. Let's now rename the first layer to low. So this will be for the low frequency and let's rename the top layer to high. So this will be for the high frequency. So let's switch off the high for the moment and let's prepare the low. So these two layers will be where we are going to do all the retouching and on the low frequency layer, we will take care of color. We will take care of smoothening the transitions between the tones. So we will be working with color and on the high frequency layer, we will take care of texture. So this is sort of simplified, but I think this is the best way to explain it in a very simple way. Okay, so let's take care of the low frequency layer first. So let's move over to filter and from here let's select blur and Gaussian blur. When it comes to the settings here, it is important to consider every image separately. So every image is different and you have to apply individual settings for every image. If your image has smaller resolution than this one, then you will have to apply lower value for the radius. So the idea here behind those settings is that you want to smoothen out the image. You want to smoothen out, especially you want to take care of all these sharp details that are visible here now in the skin. You want to smoothen the transitions. However, you want to still maintain the two dimensional look. So let's start pushing the slider towards the right. So like this, we have softened the skin, but we can still see the darker and brighter areas. So I think we can go for something around maybe 4.5 for this particular image. So this is before, this is the after. If you were working with smaller image, then of course you have to apply smaller radius here. So let's just hit OK. So this is our low frequency layer. When it comes to the high frequency layer, let's select the layer. And here we need to move over to Photoshop menu bar and from here select image and next 
apply image. So I'm working here with 16-bit image. I have developed the raw file in Capture One and of course always working with 16-bit image is better. You have more data to work with, you will have much better quality, but if you don't have access to 16-bit image, you can as well work with 8-bit. The settings for the high frequency layer will be different depending on if you have 16 or 8-bit file. Let's see now how to set this up for 16-bit file. So when it comes to the layer, select from here low, the low frequency channel RGB. This we need to tick, so invert has to be switched on. The blending mode needs to be set to add, as it is right now here. Opacity 100, scale 2 and offset needs to be set to 0. So these are the settings for 16-bit file. Let's hit OK. And if you were working with 8-bit file, let me just quickly duplicate this layer and I will show you how to approach this. So if we had the image at 8-bit, so we would need to do the same. Having the layer selected, let's just move over image, apply image. The blending mode needs to be changed to subtract. Scale stays as it was to 1. Offset you need to put in here 128 and the invert has to be switched off. So you don't want to have this ticked. So you would have this sort of settings if you were working with 8-bit image. So let's just cancel and let's get rid of this layer. Okay, as a next step, we are going to change the blend mode of the high frequency layer to linear light. So let's just pick it from here. And next we are going to group these two layers. So I have selected both of them. I'm hitting Command G and I'm going to rename this group to FS for frequency separation. Now if I switch off this group and if I switch them on, there should be no difference. The image should be exactly the same because we have divided the image into two separate layers. So now the image is represented here in the high and low frequency layer. If you like, you can record action for this so you won't have to do these steps manually. You can just hit the action and apply it automatically. So we are going to start with high frequency layer and on this layer, as I've mentioned before, we will be targeting texture. So if I switch off the low, if I switch off the background, you will see that here we have just a little bit of color. The image is not entirely black and white. You can see that we have a little bit of brown here and a little bit of the skin tones visible. But basically in this, on this layer, we will be targeting texture and on the low frequency layer where we have applied blur, we will be fixing the transitions between the tones. So let's begin retouching on the high frequency layer. So the best tool to do this is to work with stamp. So I'm going to pick it from here. And when it comes to the settings, uh, both the opacity and the flow should be set to 100. And when it comes to hardness, the brush should be set to hardness 100 because we will be working with the skin texture and we don't want to introduce any softening there. We want it to be as precise as possible. So I'm going to adjust size of the stamp dynamically and this can be done on the keyboard. This is the fastest way to do this. If I hit the left square bracket, I'm decreasing size of the brush and if I hit right square bracket, I'm increasing size of the brush. So I'm just going to be painting over the image. Remember when you are working with the stamp tool, you have to first sample from the area that you want to have the pixels copied from and they will be applied over the area that you paint. So to sample the pixels, you have to press option key. And so I'm going to, I'm pressing option and clicking here. And now I will be painting over the spot. So this is the most precise method. It's going to be a bit time consuming, but the advantage of this method is that you are taking care both of the color and of the texture.
If you were working with healing brush tool, you would be taking care just of the texture. And as I've shown you just few seconds before on the high frequency layer, we still have a little bit of color. The image is not black and white. So if we are working with the stamp tool, this gives us the highest level of control. So as you can see, this is requiring a lot of patience retouching the image that way but it pays off in the end so we need to do the pass through the whole face through the whole portrait working on the skin so i'm sampling and painting over the areas that i want to fix so if i just switch off and on let's just switch this background layer on so again so this is before and after you can see that in a few seconds i've been able to improve the texture of the skin i've been able to remove some of the blemishes that are just not needed in this image it's always a question of your decision what to remove and what to keep so basically the principle that i follow when i'm retouching images and i want to mention here that i'm not a professional retoucher i don't do the beauty retouch i work on the level that is sufficient for me for fine art portraits so for me the most important aspect is to maintain the natural character of the person so what i follow is i would remove all these little blemishes of these little spots and pimples that probably will vanish in one or two weeks so i want the subject to be looking as if it was really her skin's best day but i'm not going to be removing any skin marks like for example she has these very beautiful skin marks so this is what makes her unique i'm not going to touch this i'm not going to be removing this skin mark as well so what i'm going to do now on this high frequency layer is to slowly move over all those areas that i feel that need to be fixed i can move over those very fine lines if i want to be really detailed and basically work on improving the texture so we are on the high frequency layer and it will require some time so i'm going to speed up this video so basically i will continue working on the face on the cheek and i'll meet you when the high frequency separation layer is ready Okay, so we are pretty much done on the high frequency separation layer. I'm just checking the layer itself. So that's the best way to see if there is still some issues, if there is some areas with uneven texture. So like, for example, this one, I've spent quite a lot of time on the frequency separation on the high layer. So I've been working on the 
texture and of course it depends on the final medium that you want to present your image at so if you just want to publish your image on the internet if you want to show it on twitter or perhaps instagram there is no need to do anything at such a detailed level so remember that you should be looking at the whole face let's just reset the angle so what i have been doing with this tool is if you are working especially on transitions in your image sometimes it is quite helpful to use this tool you need to just press r on your keyboard and now you can move the image around if you combine it with the pan tool with the space you can just move around and check and sometimes it is helpful to look at your image in a sort of abstract way and to judge if the transitions are smooth or if they require still a little bit more of work to reset this again pre press and hold r key and here here reset view so I've done the work on the high layer with the stamp tool. So let's see the quick before and after. So I'm pressing option key and clicking on the little eye icon here. So this is after and this is before. Again, let's take a look at the forehead. So this is the original image and this is what I've done with the frequency separation. So I must admit this is not my favorite method. I've spent quite a lot of time and by now I've just managed to remove some of the skin texture imperfections. Now I have to move over and focus on the low frequency layer and we've already applied some blur to this layer so it's already softened. And I want to introduce another low frequency layer. I'm following advice of my colleague Martin Mikus, amazing retoucher. I'm going to add a link to his channel under this video as well. So check it out. He does really amazing stuff. So typically people would advise you to work on the low frequency layer and do something like this select the lasso tool so i'm hitting l on my keyboard we need to pick this one and when it comes to the feather it will be just the softness of the transition so i would typically go for 10 15 pixels so the general advice would be to select the area remember that now on the low frequency layer we are working on smoothening the transitions we are working on removing any uneven transitions on smoothening the transitions between the tones the brighter and darker but super important thing here that has to be emphasized is that you don't want to make the image flat and if you would be working in a typical way very easily you can just follow in this trap and make your image look fake unnatural and flat you will lose all the three-dimensional look to the image so you would do the lasso you would select this and now you would go for filter and you would go for blur gaussian blur let's pick it from here and here you would apply value that would smoothen the transition so the higher the value the sort of visually smoother the transitions are but at the same time the area is just getting flat you don't have bright areas you don't have dark areas either so this is before and this is the after so it works in two ways it smoothens the transitions but the negative part is that it flattens the face and this is not what we after so i'm actually going to cancel and i'm going to show you what i learned from martin so he advised to duplicate the low frequency layer so i'm going to just do that command j so this is our low frequency layer with the blur applied already so that's our low frequency layer and i'm going to convert it to smart object so let's just do this let's convert to smart object and now after the layer was converted to smart object we will apply the gaussian blur so i'm going to pick just the arrow and let's move over for filter and let's select again blur gaussian blur 
So now we will be working with higher value because after we apply the Gaussian blur, we will apply mask to this layer and just that will enable to apply those adjustments that just to selected areas in the image. We will be able to take complete control and just paint in the softening in the areas where it's needed. So let's just test it out. So before we have applied the radius, if I remember correctly, about 4.5. So now we can go for a little bit higher value. However, we don't want to go for something like this when everything is ruined and you have no shadows and you have no highlights. So let's again, let's maybe zero out. And remember that already on this layer there is blur applied. So we want to further smoothen the transitions and now we will be working with a brush on this layer. So let's hit apply and now let's apply mask to this layer. So having the layer selected, I'm just going to apply mask and of course invert the mask. So I'm hitting command I. So let's maybe first try to take care of this pimple here. So if I switch off this layer, there is no difference. Let's try to paint in some of the blur that we have just applied. So I'm selecting brush and let's decrease size of the brush. Let's left square bracket. Let's switch those samples because I want to be painting with white color on the black mask. So I'm hitting X on the keyboard. Okay, opacity 100, flow 100, and I will be working with soft brush, so hardness set to zero. So what we want to be doing now is to be painting very, very gently only over these areas where we want to improve the transitions. So for sure, don't paint over dark areas, don't paint over areas that are adding three-dimensionality to, to your image that are shaping the form of the head of the subject. So let's try to take care of this pimple. So if I paint over it, you can see that this is not fixing the problem entirely. And in a case like this, when you had this really, really large pimple, you need to take care of it a bit differently. So I'm going to switch off this layer or maybe we can leave it. Just go to the low frequency layer, the first one. I'm going to switch off high frequency so that way I will be seeing what I'm doing. Maybe I will switch off this one as well. So being here, I'm going to get my stamp. So I'm hitting S on my keyboard and let's just change hardness to zero and I will be, let's increase size of the brush. So now I want to sample texture and color and I'm going to fix it that way because it's not possible to get rid of this with the traditional method. So I'm just going to paint over this. We can increase size of the brush and, okay. This is too dark. So let's decrease size of the brush. And basically, that's it, we fix this. We can maybe remove this one as well. So now I'm on the low frequency layer. Okay, so let's switch on the low frequency layer as well. I'm going to just get rid of, of what I've done here before. I'm pressing and holding Alt key and clicking on the mask so, okay, let's just get rid of all this entirely. I'm hitting Command A, selecting all the mask and hitting Delete. Now I can switch on my frequency layer and we can start working on improving those transitions. So let's switch on the high frequency layer. So now we can continue working on the copy of the low frequency layer and just take care of all those uneven transitions between the tones. So on this one, we have fixed the texture and on this one, let's take care of the tonal transition. So I need to get back to my brush now. I'm hitting B, opacity 100, flow 100, but let's just go for hardness set to zero. So with this one, just remember, be gentle because as you can see, it works quite strongly. We can in fact maybe lower the flow. So it's better to apply 
few more brush strokes rather than one that is too strong and that is causing more damage than actually helping. So very gently we can paint over all these areas that need a little bit of softening. So for example here we still have those uneven tones. Now it's important to keep the brush at the size that won't be creating any small patches but don't make it that big that it will go over edges. So for example here when I'm working around the lips it's very important not to paint over the edge of the lips because this will soften the edge and that way I will be losing all those sharp elements that are super important and that add the three-dimensional look to the image. So when I was taking the image I have set particular aperture, I was focusing on the lips, on the eyes and the rest of the face, the skin is a little bit softer so that way the image has the three-dimensional look. So if you compare the eyelashes with the ears you can see that this is exactly how we achieve the depth in the image. So I can soften those transitions a little bit here. Let's take a quick preview, so option and click on this little eye icon here. Let's move a little bit over the forehead. So here we have that brighter area, we have those little darker areas here as well. However, I don't think it will be possible to smoothen this area entirely. You can in fact see that I can't do this. If I take a preview of the mask, you can see that I have applied the mask at 100%. It's fully white, but I was not able to even out the transitions here. So we have still the dark part. So if you remember the, the edit that I've done in the previous video, you should remember that we have taken care of this sort of problems perfectly with dodging and burning. So already at this stage you can see that there are limits to the frequency separation method. It's not the ideal method. For some images it works best, for some images it's more than enough. However, for typical image I would advise you to work with dodging and burning because you can't really even out those transitions here. The image is still quite flat and you can't basically say that the edit is ready just with the frequency separation. So if we take a quick preview, so this is before, this is the after. Okay, we have fixed the texture, we have fixed some blemishes, but there is still a lot of work required on those darker areas. So if I would like to do the pass under the eyes, this will just flatten the image, this will make the face flat, but this is not fixing the problem. So that's exactly the reason why I would say that frequency separation is not my preferred method. Sometimes when I need to very quickly smoothen the skin I will do this with frequency separation, but only for images that I'm going to use really at a small resolution. So when I have something that requires some attention, like this portrait, I would definitely go for dodging and burning. So that's basically what can be done with frequency separation. If I switch off the whole group, this is the image we have started working with and this is the result. I'm going to save the image at this stage so we will have our image to compare with the two previous results. So let's hit Shift Command S and I'm just going to quickly save it here as frequency separation TIFF. Okay, so let's hit save and because I've already been working on this image with dodging and burning, I can apply in fact dodging and burning. So this is already done here in this folder and let's just switch off the layers that are not needed so we don't need the cleanup. This is just the dodging and burning and these are our further adjustments. 
So if I wanted to continue this edit, if I wouldn't have the dodging and burning done, so this is the original image, then I would apply our frequency separation that is here in this folder. So just to make things clear, original frequency separation. So if I would be at this point, if I wanted to finish this edit in Photoshop, I would now apply dodging and burning and then I would apply a little bit of color grading and some targeted adjustment like for example working on the eyes and darkening certain parts, brightening, shaping, modeling the face. So because we've already done this, I'm not going to do this again. I'm just going to enable the layers that I have already worked on. So clean up we don't need because we've done this in frequency separation. Let's switch on dodging and burning. So here I've just done dodging and burning and this is what really makes the magic for me when it comes to retouching portrait. You can see with these very simple layers dodge burn you are able to smoothen out all those transitions. In case of this image this is particularly visible on the forehead. She had a little bit of these uneven tones and it just makes this image very natural but very clean and fresh. So this is explained in the video number two, in the second video from the series. In the first video I've been working in Capture One and over there I've been applying some dodging and burning in Capture One as well. So depending what is the software of your choice. After I would do dodging and burning, I would apply some targeted adjustments. So I would work a little bit of enhancing the eyes. So this was already done in the previous video. So I would do this with curves. After this, I would enhance contrast in the image because it's quite flat. So I would be working with curves. So if I just click here, we can take a quick preview. So this is the curve that I have applied to introduce a little bit of contrast. So we've been working with the classic S shaped curve plus I have lifted blacks. You can see that I have moved the black point upwards. This created a little bit of matte effect and this made the image a little bit softer. So this is before and after. This is really necessary point. This is what does this image for me. And in the end I have applied a little bit of color grading with Photoshop with curves as well. Here I felt that it's a little bit too saturated so I've added a little bit of black and white adjustment layer to make the image a little bit cooler, a little bit less saturated, more on the silverish side. So here are our adjustments and without the adjustments this is just the frequency separation and on those additional layers I've done the rest. So let's now save the image with frequency separation and the, the adjustments. So FS plus adjustments and now I will be able to open all the images in Capture One and compare the final results. Okay, so our third edit with frequency separation in Photoshop is done. Now it's time to compare the results. So first I want to show you the three images without the targeted adjustments, without any color grading, and then we will take a look at final effect. So let's start with the first one. So this is Capture One. Let's just bring back tools. I'm presenting, just by the way, I'm presenting the images in Capture One because for the TIFFs it doesn't really matter. That's just the way of previewing the images. And for the first one I want it to be opened in Capture One so you can see the difference between the raw files and TIFF images. So here I have switched off the layers with targeted adjustments, with contrast and with color balance. So this is my raw file. Let's now move over to the second image. This edit was done in Photoshop with dodging and burning method. So basically I was working with 16-bit TIFF file. The image was exported from Capture One. It was developed in Capture One. So I wanted to have the same starting point. 
So here on the stiff, I was working with dodging and burning on micro adjustments. So I was retouching the skin. And in the end, I have applied a little bit of shaping of dodging and burning to add two dimensionality to the face. But in the end, I have applied as well the layer that adjusted contrast. And let's now move over to the last image, to the third one. This was done in Photoshop as well. We've been doing this today with Photoshop frequency separation. So now we can zoom in and we can compare at a little bit of more detailed level. So as you can see here, the images look quite similar. However, if you would ask my opinion, I would say that I like the quality that can be maintained when you are not leaving raw editor and when you are maintaining all the data, the transitions are much more smooth. If I zoom in even more, I am on a small laptop on retina display and this is 400% but you can see the quality loss already visible here. So this is the images at the skin retouch level. So let's zoom out and let me now open all the three files and let's take a look at the final stage where we have applied targeted adjustments and when we have applied color grading. Okay, so here we are with our final results. So we have three final images. The first on the left hand side, this is Capture One, Skin Retouch, Color Grading, Contrast Adjustments. The image in the middle, the edit was done in Photoshop on 16-bit TIFF file that was developed in Capture One. So I wanted to have the same starting point for all the three images. I wanted to work with the same white balance. So the middle Photoshop with dodging and burning. And the last one, the image to the right is Photoshop with frequency separation. So if we zoom in, to be honest, there is not much of a difference visible. You probably won't be able to see much on the MP4 video on, on YouTube, but in this sort of work, all the nuances really matter. So if I would have to say my personal opinion, of course, I would always prefer to stick with a raw editor. And regardless if you were working with Capture One or any other raw editor of your choice, it could be Lightroom, it could be Adobe Camera Raw or any other, to be honest. It doesn't matter as long as you are staying inside the raw editor without exporting your raw file outside of raw editor and converting into bitmap to TIFF or PSD file. Because as long as you are inside the raw editor, you are working with the largest amount of data and you are truly working in a non-destructive way. So beside of keeping all the data, beside of maintaining the highest possible quality, when I'm working in Capture One, I can create really large amount of different variants. I can now work on colors, I can create different color version. And if I would keep all my files still as raw files, I would be basically taking very little amount of space in Capture One because all the adjustments are stored as text files. If I would like to do the same in Photoshop, I would have to keep the base TIFF file as a version one. Then I would have to apply different color grading and basically save copies. And this will take a lot of storage space. So that's why I would prefer working with raw editor. That's the second reason. And you can, of course, decide yourself. This is personal preference. If I look at the three images, I would say that I really love the colors that I was able to 
achieve in Capture One. After exporting the image to TIFF and after working on color grading in Photoshop, I was simply not able to maintain these fresh and nice, warm, saturated golden tones. So you might not be able to see this on YouTube, but it is up for you to experiment and to compare. So as a quick conclusion, I would say stick to RAW Editor if you are able to retouch skin in your RAW Editor, do this. And if you want to work in Photoshop, I would definitely recommend working with dodging and burning. This gives you much better results and the method is less consuming in comparison with frequency separation. Okay, so let's wrap up the video. I hope you enjoyed watching those three different methods. I hope you enjoyed working with me. Thanks for watching. If you want to see two previous videos, you can find links in the description as well. If you would like to learn more about Capture One, you can check out my comprehensive course on Capture One. I'm going to add the link under the video as well. You can find over there as well a link to Marcin's channel. Marcin Mikus, really amazing retoucher. So check out what he is doing. So I hope you have learned something from my videos. I hope you are enjoying this channel. So thanks for watching. This was Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes and I'll see you in the next video. See you by now.